Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my studio. My name is Michael Markowski, and today we're going to recreate another painting by another one of my favorite artists. Today we're going to be looking at Vincent van Gogh, or Vincent van Gogh, and his famous painting, Irises, from 1889, completed within the last year of van Gogh's life before he died. And we'll talk about maybe different uh, uh, debated theories of how that happened, what actually caused his death as we go on today. Um, but this is really considered by many to be one of the high watermarks of his career when he's just really hitting his stride, which makes it all that more unfortunate that he passed away uh, before he could continue. Really, he'd only been making art for about six years uh, full time by the time that he died. Okay, so if you're watching for the very first time, I just want you to know that here's the time stamped chapter list. When the video is finished, I go through and, and give uh, time stamps. You skip right ahead to whichever area of the video you want to go to. We're going to start out with the image transfer. We'll get the image onto the canvas, then we'll stain the canvas. Then we'll talk briefly a little bit about Van Gogh. Uh, we've talked about Van Gogh many times because this is probably the eighth or ninth episode of Van Gogh. We've done a uh, different painting each time. Um, but we'll talk maybe more specifically about irises and his relationship to flowers and nature. Uh, and then we'll start right into the painting. I'm not even sure if we'll need to do much underpainting just because of the style that Van Gogh did. Uh, and, you know, it's a dense composition. I'm imagining two to three hours for this one. Okay. So, let's dive right in. We'll get the, the image started. Oh, sorry. So, this is where we're going to start. We're going to start with the image transfer, and I'll show you how to do that. Maybe even before we do that, let me show you where you can find a free downloadable template that you can use to help get your painting started. So if you click in the Dropbox folder in the link below, you're gonna see a folder with a lot of names in here. These are all paintings we've already done. And we are, today's painting is in folder 118, under here in irises. And you're gonna see three files. There's the original, and then the two versions of the outline. One's a JPEG PDF, they're otherwise completely identical. So you can download that print it off and then you can use it for this process here let me just get this queued up okay so I'm going to talk over top of this while it plays. So what we've got here, I printed the original, oops. We don't want that one, we want. Okay, <laughs> here we are. Okay, so here what I'm using is a 9 by 12 sized canvas board. Then you can get the exact same ones from uh, in using the link in the description below from Amazon. And I've printed out my outline using my inkjet printer at home, and I'm just taping this roughly right about in the middle there. All right, so I tape it down. And then I'm going to use some carbon transfer paper here. You can use graphite transfer paper. There's different colors of it. I just use the black. And I, you, I've got this from just the local dollar store. But you can find it 
at art supply stores or even fabric stores because that's how people transfer a pattern onto fabric before they cut it out and sew it together. So once I've got it aligned in there, of course the shiny side down on your carbon paper, we're just gonna tra trace over top of this. Now this is gonna take some time, there's a lot of detail. So um, you'll see I did most of the stuff that we see kind of in the middle and to the right, but at the top left and top, or in the bottom left, I pretty much left those areas blank. Oh, because there's really no point in getting all that. All right, and you can see I also kind of flipping up and down just to see if there's any major things missing here. And once I've got to that point, we are ready to move on. Okay, so once we've got our image onto the canvas, uh, we are going to move to the next step. Okay, so the next step is to apply a little bit of color to prime the canvas. And that is the Italian word imprematura, which we're going to apply over top of our drawing here. All right, so I, I keep this. Sometimes it's nice to refer to that. And I'm gonna now put some color over top before I do anything else. Now the color that I use is called warm, uh, is a warm yellow. And I'm gonna use this brand. I'm not sponsored or paid by anybody. I bought all these materials with my own money, this Azo Yellow Deep, and I'm going to apply it over top of the canvas. Now you're going to see this is what's called a split primary palette, where we have two yellows, two reds, and two blues. There's a cool and a warm of each, and I use white as well. I, I do have a black, but I very, very rarely use it. Um, and so, but if you don't have Amsterdam, then you can certainly use Golden, Liquitex, Windsor & Newton, Artist Loft from Michael's Art Supplies, Buzz, Peebo, Holbein, Dyler Rowney, lots of different brands. If there's one that you're using that I haven't mentioned, please let me know so that we can, I can uh, help you select those colors. Okay, so I'm gonna use my warm yellow and I'm gonna put it here onto Oh, that's a lot. Don't quite, well, actually, you know what? Maybe this, this this might be the kind of painting where a little bit more yellow works. Just realized I forgot my water. Okay, so I'll just pour a bit of water in here. This is the only time I ever use water when I'm painting with acrylics because um, ideally you want to be using mediums that have uh, a binding strength to them rather than water because water is how we clean our brushes. Now this works as a, as a priming layer because we're painting onto this gesso and gesso is super absorbent. Gesso is essentially made up of plaster and uh, transparent paint. So it absorbs water really well, just gobbles it up. And so we're really staining as opposed to painting in this stage. And this kind of warm yellow just seems to me to be very appropriate, particularly for Van Gogh. Um, it's a very, you know, this kind of golden warm yellow uh, reminds me a lot of Southern France and the light that Van Gogh loved so much and that features so prominently in his work, in, in his most mature work. There we go. So, 
just move this out of the way. Let's clean our brush. So, there's our painting begun. So how about let's just take a few moments just to talk a little bit about the biography here. Okay, so now that we've got our drawing established and our imprimatura, our first color, our stain there, let's talk just a little bit about Van Gogh and the painting irises which we are gonna paint today. So, if we we've ta again we've talked about Van Gogh and his biography many many times. Uh, born in 1853 in the Netherlands and dies at age 37 in France, which uh, is usually quite young for an artist. A lot of artists don't are just sort of getting started at this point in their careers, because many artists begin with a different career until they have a little bit of money and comfort and then jump into making art. And Van Gogh was sort of you know, no different. He was someone who really wanted to be a priest growing up and was uh, both rejected by the church uh, during his uh, seminary studies as well as sort of fell out of... Um, uh, he, he began really questioning his faith at times and decided to pursue art which was also something that his brother was very interested in. His brother was became a very well-known art dealer in Paris and supported Van Gogh really for the past the fa final decade of his life. So, um, what can we say that we haven't already said? Um, at risk of just repeating myself over and over and over. We've talked about his, um, his sort of childhood. We've talked about uh, the, the him cutting his ear off uh, after the failed um, attempt at starting an artist colony with his good friend Paul Gauguin. And Paul Gauguin, by the way, we're going to be doing a couple of paintings of his over the next few months. So we'll kind of comp we'll we'll look at the relationship from the opposite side here shortly. Um, so we see that, you know, by this point in 1889, Van Gogh is now creating really his most iconic artworks. So we have things like the sunflowers have been completed, with Starry Night has been completed, and it's during that kind of final summer of 1889 where he is both kind of at his peak, but also starting to kind of... Um, have some health struggles, mostly mental health struggles, and it's debated today how, um, how I guess, quote unquote, sick he actually was, because our relationship to mental health has changed quite radically, not just over the past 130 years, but really even just over the past decade, right? So what was considered to be insane 100 years ago were things like, um, a thief could be insane for stealing a loaf of bread to support their family that was considered to be insane that someone breaking the rules that's insane um, often women would be classified as insane um, for getting upset uh, over their husband's infidelity or for having a miscarriage uh, and they'd be committed to an asylum for the rest of their life right so it is important just realizing that Van Gogh is a was living in a particular context so really trying to compare um, his mental state to what uh, you know to today the way we think about mental health today is very very tricky and there's been lots of books written about that um, 
Anyway, uh, let's let's look at the painting itself. So, and actually, this painting is now in the collection of the Getty Museum in Los Angeles, and a really cool museum. If you've never been there, I always think of the Getty Museum as sort of like the Disney World of art museums because you park at the bottom of this hill and then you get in a tram that takes you up the side of the hill which is you know you have this beautiful view of downtown Los Angeles and the ocean and then you get up to the very top and there's these beautiful marble buildings that are at the very top J Paul Getty by the way the 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 the, the namesake for the Getty Museum was a very famous oil baron uh, because maybe people don't realize Los Angeles was um, a big oil producing area uh, at during the turn of the previous century, even before Hollywood uh, was around. And if you look carefully at early Hollywood films, you'll see these oil derricks that are pumping oil sometimes in the background while Charlie Chaplin is running by because they featured so prominently in the landscape at that time. Anyway, long story short, this painting was purchased by the Getty Museum in, um, uh, what was it, uh, 1987 for 50, th or no, sorry, it was purchased uh, in 1990 for, it doesn't say in here, uh, let me see, I gotta, I gotta get this right. Um, so it was purchased in 1990 for $122 million. So a very expensive painting at the time. And it became at that moment one of the most expensive, if not the most expensive painting ever purchased. And I remember when it went on display there, uh, visiting it and seeing, you know, that was really the talk of the town. And the people just could not understand why anyone would pay that much money for an artwork. But in sort of retrospect, I'm sure they have easily made their money back on that purchase, selling postcards and umbrellas and mugs. And it, um, I don't think you have to pay admission to the Getty now that I remembered. It's a free museum. Um, but all of the, the people that go there and buy things in the gift shop and stuff. It's one of the great draw, probably the greatest draw to that museum, if not of any museum in Los Angeles. People will literally travel all the way across the world just to see this particular painting. And it is often considered to have been really the, the, the greatest, most iconic work of his that was still in a private collection before it was purchased by the Getty Museum. Um... So it says here, Iris is currently the 31st on the list of most expensive paintings ever sold. And if it was uh, adjusted for inflation, it would be 102nd. So you could see over the past few decades, the, the, the art market has continued to expand and the prices of these paintings continue to get larger and larger and larger, higher and higher, more and more expensive. Um, so... Let's let's actually just go right in into the painting itself here. So typically, what we do is do a little bit of underpainting to get the the uh, the composition established. Uh, but with this one, I think I'm just going to go right in and start attacking it directly with color. So let's maybe go right to background pass number one that's what I call it because I like to go from background to foreground background to foreground and finish ideally not having to go back to the background a third time so if this is our background what or this is where we're going to start what I want to do is start getting in some of these cooler greens that are in the background of this particular painting and this up in the front here is actually our foreground. So even if we, so we can think of our background as being the greens, the middle ground is being these flowers and their stems and the leaves. And then the foreground is being right in the front, including these flowers here. So really to get the most amount of depth in this painting, we want to use exclusively cool colors in the background 
cool and warm colors in the middle space here, the middle ground, and then warm colors exclusively in the foreground. And we actually see him do, doing that very well here um, because these are all cooler greens. We have th these flowers are, are a warm blue, ultramarine blue, maybe even a little bit purpley. And then the these leaves are still on the kind of cooler side of things. And then he's got his these leaves in the very front here are even warmer and more saturated. So they really leap forward. And this brown is also very warm. Uh, and so it's going to come forward towards us as well. So Van Gogh was clearly aware of how warm and cool temperatures of color really affect the, the space, and he's utilizing it very well in this particular painting. Okay, so let's get some color on the palette here. Okay. So I think we're, we're going to need probably most colors. Oh, I just see our nanny. <laughs> our daughter just devoured a croissant. <laughs> she didn't eat her breakfast this morning, so it doesn't surprise me that she was very hungry. away. Again, if you're just joining us, I mentioned earlier what these paints are and the brand and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but we, we can make basically any color in the color spectrum that's visible to the human eye with this very simple palette here. Uh, the painting is still a little bit wet. Usually I blabber on for much longer um, before these paintings. So as an opportunity to dry, I'm going to blow dry this and then we'll mix color. Okay, so let's get our green that's in the background uh, completed here. size of brush there's a, so much detail in this painting I think I'm gonna pretty much stay with some smaller brushes to get started I usually like to have a much larger brush when I'm painting uh, at this stage but I think we're just gonna leap right into smaller ones okay so I'm taking my cool yellow and my warm blue and I mix this together now that's a beautiful, nice, bright green. But there's not a lot of that just on its own in this painting. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify it a little bit. We're going to add a bit of white into this color. So we'll take a bit more. 
um, because he's using a lot of white because white will push that color backwards in space so I think I'm just going to take this color and I'm going to use it um, quite a lot actually I'm just going to put this um, you know what I think I'm going to do this whole background like that I could spend a lot of time painting around a bunch of little details, but it would be so much faster just to kind of paint over top of them and then paint them over top of these colors. So I'm just going to start with this big shape. Now the painting kind of crops off here on the side. Um, I think I'm just I'm gonna kind of bring this down, so it'll be look look a little bit different than the original. Oops, sorry. I'm also gonna take this color and I'm just gonna go right. You know what? I'm just gonna go right across here. And I'm painting kind of thin and um, almost like a bit of a dry brush as I go over top of this. That allows some of that yellow that I painted earlier to kind of come through a little bit. So now I'm going to try to search out in between some of these leaves where this color can go. And if in doubt, I'm going to paint over top of some lines. That way those um, this background color will kind of seep through in between. It looks like the the that grass or the whatever is in behind here with another bush or something and sort of there I'm just gonna bring that down a little bit further it won't hurt for it to be down below so with a painting like this that is so dense with um, imagery, it wouldn't surprise me if Van Gogh had done something like paint, go, gone and sketched it maybe the night before or the day before onto a canvas and then the next day gone back and done the, and did the painting on location. Because, you know, it took me half an hour 20 minutes to do to trace this outline and that's knowing exactly where all the lines have got to go right when van gogh did it he was doing, he was looking at this and struggling to figure out where all these lines have to go so it would have taken him longer than it took me absolutely no doubt 100 percent so 
I just think as as a technique, it would have probably been a lot easier for him just to sketch it out and maybe take a break and then come back and work on it um, after he's got the sketch established there. And that's one of the things that, you know, that I think comes up in these episodes that might not we might not think about when we're just looking at them in a museum or art gallery that you know when we start trying to replicate these artworks uh, it gives us kind of a unique insight into the working methods of the artist so I find that very very exciting okay so let's just take a look now that looks you know maybe on its own not quite as dark enough maybe it needs to be or you know a little bit brighter or a little bit more dull it's very hard to see what that color is until we get more color on here I'm pretty confident that I'm I'm in the right ballpark I mean we can kind of see these colors side by side up top there where the two different uh, the the video feed and the image match I'm pretty confident I got the right color but I think it's possible that later on we're, we might do even a little bit more of that. Okay, so that's a good start. How about we also now start going into, well, hmm, now that I think about it, let's keep it simple before we go into some of those details. Uh, maybe I, I maybe I will actually move to yeah I'm sort of debating how I want to do this I think that would be actually probably let's let's stop there and let's go to the foreground so let's clean this in this paintbrush So now let's go to our next area of the painting, the foreground, and let's get some of the the uh, the, the flowers and the stems and leaves, and then even the area in the very front. Let's get all that established here. So that color here is very similar to the color we just used. For our background, this time, however, we're going to add more blue and more white. It's going to give a bit more of that teal quality. So we're that's um, actually, you know what? I think I'm going to do the brown in front first. That way, I can paint over a little bit of that. Okay, so let's sorry, let's do that first and. So to make that warm brown, what we're going to do is we're going to take our warm yellow and our warm red and mix this together. Maybe we'll look at them side by side. So you can see it's this kind of hot orange here. And I'm, I actually am quite tempted to use this color as it is. We, we will use a color just like this in a little bit. There's, there's two different options, one of which is we could paint this color everywhere and then just put white over top. You know what, I think... What did Van Gogh do here? Let's, let's just take a second. We tell looking at this what color was applied down here first it does look like maybe a little bit more of a pastel orange here so I'm gonna add 
a little bit of blue into this here that's going to make it just a bit more of a brown and I'm going to take my white and mix that in here so now we got this kind of a bit of a peachy color and we'll put that in there all right mm, yeah actually maybe let's put even a little bit more blue in there okay so And you know, it's also, now that I think about it, it's possible that he could have also have done something like this, done the drawing, painted this layer of paint, and then gone home and come back the next day and added the details. That is also a possibility. Um, we're not really ex sure exactly his working method but we do know that he was kind of a, once he got going, he was like a machine, just cranking paintings out. So, you know, I, I, people always ask me, like, if you could go back in time, what, what, uh, what would you do? And I always say, like, if I could go back in time and just be a little bit of a fly on the wall and watch someone like Van Gogh mix paint set up their working environment and that would be super fascinating to me That's the that stem would continue down here. I mean, this is, I mean, a painting like this, with such like dense weaving of. Uh, imagery is really time consuming to sketch out and um, it shows Van Gogh's incredible attention to detail and patience right like I think Van Gogh is sort of famously seen as this very emotional tempestuous wild man and then you see a painting like this and you think man if that's what a wild person is, um, then because um, to to be able to make artwork like this under and to be so controlled is really remarkable. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to do down here because I've got this extra little half inch of space. So I'm just going to kind of leave it a little bit blank like that, and we'll just fill it up with some flowers. Okay, so how about we'll just zoom back out and just see, maybe I'll paint. A little bit of this. In there, okay. So that's good for our first little foreground layer here. And it has, you know, it's got a bit of like a fleshy kind of quality, that pastel-y kind of thing. But we're gonna modify that shortly with much more dynamic brush strokes. So that kind of color is gonna underlie everything. Now, I could have gone, you know, when I was debating maybe to go a little bit more orange, 
The reason why I didn't do that is if I have a little bit more white under every other color is going to be just a little bit more bright, a little bit more intense. So it really just depends. Like if I wanted the colors over top to be a bit more muted, I would have gone for, you know, uh, more the more saturated color, which ultimately would look a little bit darker as it mixes with this yellow. Okay. So let's do the, the leaves next. So those leaves are a um, this same color here. Let's take our cool blue and our cool yellow. So you can see now, like these are the, this is the same color combination here, but previously we added a lot more yellow to it. I'm gonna put a bunch of white in. We'll mix that up. Now that looks like it's that would be pretty good maybe for my outlines later on. So before we get there, we still gotta get the stuff inside. So here's maybe a little bit closer. Maybe even let's just take even more white. So we'll paint with this, and as I go, I might get a little bit more yellow on my brush at different times. Um, and I think I'm also just going to start going down to an even smaller brush. Actually, well, I might use a little bit of that brush. Let's see how much I can get done just... Yeah, the one thing with this... Yeah, I'm going to have to use a... Just because I, I noticed that I'm covered, because there's without using any um, fluid in here, I'm gonna paint, end up painting over top of my pencil lines, so. Actually, it looks like if I keep my paint kind of thin, I can kind of get away with it, so. Now I'm going to I'm just going to kind of quickly go over most of the painting with this color. I'm going to do a lot of outlining in this painting as well, so I'm not too Worried about being a little bit sloppy, actually. Yeah, as as if I go kind of thin, I can see the lines coming through. So I'm going to continue with this. Remember, the goal with any of these artworks is not to make a perfect replica, but instead to, you know, learn a little bit about painting and have some fun. You can see I kind of made it, splattered some paint 
there and sort of tried to wipe it away, not very successfully, because I'm just gonna um, paint in those areas later on. This area, this this whole aspect of this painting, we just want to kind of get done as quickly as possible. Don't fiddle too hard. Worry about if you get things in the right place. Okay. Um, now I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix just a little bit more of a yellow in here. Oops, that's a lot more. Take some more white. So just a slightly different color there. And then I'm just gonna paint over top in certain areas here. Looks like, you know what, I'm gonna just use the blow dryer real quick just to lock this all in place. So my goal here is now to start adding some of the variations of these greens. And we can keep it really subtle. We don't have to go too loud. And we don't have to be perfect either because we're going to be outlining everything. That's going to take the most time in this painting. It's just going around outlining things and I'm also not going to spend too much thought or worry about trying to get the right greens in the right places. Like my brain is just not big enough, or, and my patience is not big enough to be able to sit here and, and work in hours and hours and hours to match perfectly. Okay. 
Okay, let's go for one that's maybe got even more intensely green. So I'm just taking maybe less white, mixing that. So this is just going to help kind of create a little bit more uh, depth when we have a few different colors representing you know, the layers of, of leaves and otherwise it'll just be all very similar, right? And maybe I'm even right there being a little bit too bold. And if you feel like you're a little bold, then just go back and kind of modify them again just a little bit. Good. Um, I do feel like one of the thing. I wonder if I should. You know what? Let's just keep on going. Let's do the flowers next. So just quickly wash my brushes. So now let's get our purple in here. Or it's a it's a it's this blue. Maybe in a few places we can even add a little bit of cool blue and we can also add a little bit of cool red in here. So um, I think to start what I'm going to do is just take my warm blue and white and mix these guys together. You can see that's pretty much the color right there. Um, I'm also going to do a, a little bit of a slightly different version. Oops, that's way too much red. So let's just modify that. A bit of white. Do you see that just slightly purpley version? Alright, and then let's do another one. It's even got a bit of warm blue in it. So you see this? Now we've got three different um, warmer kind of purpley blues. This one's obviously the coolest, but it's still got a bit of this warm blue in there, right? So they're all tied together, right? We might call this like an analogous set of colors, right? And we can use them throughout this painting. In fact, let's just, while I got this paint on my brush,
This might be probably the coolest color. So you see how I'm just sort of putting in all these big color shapes here. And thus far I'm just using that cooler um, blue. And I think this is probably not too dissimilar from the way he would have painted kind of these little blobs and then transform them into more recognizable things as we go. So that's the color that I've been using, right? This is our coolest one. Maybe let's go the opposite way. Let's take a bit more of this uh, warmer one. Whoa, it looks very different all of a sudden. You're like, you're like, whoa, that is, you know, a, a different, blue like this one now looks very purple side by side because these are the two extreme contrasts of the colors we mixed and so we want this color to be predominantly in the back or sorry the foreground here Obviously, this we're going to add way more nuance here as we go, but we want to kind of establish these color shapes and color spaces. And that's also quite genius. Look how he's got that white flower there. He's got another bit more white down there. Almost forming this kind of triangular uh, movement through the painting. Okay. Do I want to do any... I think I'm, before, I'm not going to do any detail yet. Let's just uh, keep on moving forward. Because this is... This would be... Again, it wouldn't have surprised me if Van Gogh got to this particular place and called it a day and then came back and finished working on it. Maybe actually just before I move on, let's take some of this white Get a, allow a little bit of purple on there. Okay. 
And let's just see, where the other flower that also has some white. These are almost like little placeholders for me so that when I'm I get into the act here I can just sort of I don't have to be searching for things because I've got like some landmarks to help me navigate this painting. just a little bit in the background. Where was that? Okay. So, after half hour or so of painting, that's where we're at. Now, let's move on. Okay, so really we've got all of the major colors in this painting established. We're gonna now start going into more of the details. So our first step now is to go into the details in the background and hopefully we can finish the background completely so that we're just working on the foreground for the remaining of the episode. So let's take a look at the background in a little bit more detail. Hmm. So we can see some of these darker, some of these are actually got some warmer greens as well in here. Look, this looks a lot like a Monet painting, which is very interesting because um, Van Gogh is considered to be a post-impressionist painter and Monet is the most famous impressionist painter. But clearly you can see the inspiration that he's drawing from Monet here. And it's interesting because Monet, uh, Van Gogh would have seen Monet's work probably through his brother. His brother would have come across a number of Monet paintings and would have sold them. And so whenever Van Gogh would have visited his brother, he would have seen them in person. Um, and I'm sure he would have been shocked and blown away because it would have looked very different than the kind of work he was familiar with growing up, which was, you know, these old master Dutch paintings that are very brown and gray and kind of gloomy, not very colorful. And then when he comes to France and he sees some of the, what some of the more modernist painters are doing, I'm sure it was just like, wow, you can use color like that? That's crazy. So let's go back to our greens that we had mixed before. And this time I'm going to introduce a little bit of warm yellow into some of these mixtures here. And in fact, I'm going to just take a bit of this like that. Maybe even get, let's just get a bit of cool blue in here. There's that mixture. I'm gonna also do another one with some warm red to give me this orangey color that he's using. Um, maybe let's get it even more intense. We'll use, by adding that warm red as opposed to the cool red, I'm just gonna get a bit brighter orange. So we've got a kind of a little bit of a, a mish of colors in there, which I, I like. Oh, come on, let's go back here. Ah. 
guess is that the top of that painting? Hmm. Okay. be a little bit intense right sometimes colors look very different on the palette than they do when we put it on here so we keep a few like that but let's go so even though these these colors are a little bit more warm they're they're being kind of held back a little bit restrained because we've got this cool yellow underneath and around it so it's going to kind of keep them from just leaping forward in a strange way So right now they're a little bit lighter, or sorry, darker. We're gonna darken them and lighten them in different places as we go. Probably as part of our finishing touches here. And I'm not putting these in the quote unquote right places. I'm just putting little flowers in the background. In fact, Maybe it's worth just zooming back out and just seeing so we don't go too far off the deep end here. using more and more yellow just warm yellow on its own Pretty good. Now let's go to our green that we had mixed. And actually, let's zoom back in just so you can see a little bit closer what I'm up to here. So now, what I'm going to be doing. Maybe a little bit of outlining. Well, actually, not even outlining yet. We're just going to be putting in these little bits of green. They're just kind of all over the place here. So this is kind of a, a, a warmer green, but it's still made up mostly of cool uh, blue and cool yellow.
Now I'm going to take some white and mix this into this very same color. Oops. So up in this area, it's very, very subtle what I'm doing. Barely visible. Okay. I'm going to do the same. Let's get a bit more yellow and a bit more white. You know, it's, it's these little details that just appear to be kind of a big waste of time because they're barely visible that give the painting its, um, you know, it's, it's real power because then it lo we can, for those people that are willing to spend that extra time looking, they're rewarded by all of the beautiful detail. So what's interesting is, you know, the same color that's applied over on the right uh, and sort of just blends in becomes much more visible when it's next to much darker colors. Right? When you have a bunch of lighter colors side by side, a light color is barely noticeable, it doesn't really stand out. But when we put it next to colors that are darker, we get a much more intense contrast, right? Maybe I'm going to just take the same color and get some of my cool yellow on here. And take some white and my cool yellow. Just a little bit of cool blue. So we're creating this kind of mosaic of little marks. Filling in spaces in between spaces. In between other paint.
Okay, let's uh, let's just pick up the pace and let's just go right to doing some outlines, I think, in here. So let's take some of our cool blue. We want about as we want this to be, you know, maybe just a little bit darker than what we have down below, but not too much. Otherwise, it's going to leap forward again into the um, from the background. Looks like I need even more blue. Now he's ultimately going to be using even warmer blue for some of this, but I'm going to build up before I get there. now take a bit of our warm blue and mix this in here. So remember there's still a little bit of white in here. So I'm not going to go over every line. Okay, now what I'm going to do, let's take some of this warm blue and mix it in with our warm yellow. All right, so we're making a warm green. We're going to put in the background. There's a little bit of white in there as well. So here I'm just going to try to paint again in between existing brush strokes, almost like basically like pointillism, right? Let's just zoom out. So I, I think I'll I'm gonna move on from this area soon here. 
it obviously is not exactly the same and I think we'd want to maybe do a little bit more detailing later on as part of our finishing touches Let's take a bit of white and warm yellow. When that dries, we'll put a bit more just the warm yellow on its own in those places. Okay, I'm just looking at that top right. So I'm seeing a bit more cool yellow with some white going in back into this top right corner here Maybe, no, you know what, I'm just going to let it like that and then because that's so hard for me to, to decide what is actually going on there that I'm just going to leave that for right now. so far team so now let's move to another area okay so we've got our background mostly finished I think there's a there's gonna be a little bit more I want to do there but it's very it's there's this painting there's so much detail that I don't want to get bogged down in here and then realize I, I need to fix it because it's not the right colors I want to just sort of get pretty close we'll work on the foreground and get that pretty much finished and then that'll give us a clearer idea of what our background needs if anything all right, I think there might be, we're going to maybe outline a few of those flowers, but let's now go into the foreground. And I think what I want to do now is maybe the, the, the ground in the foreground itself. And then really once we're, we've got that established, then we're just going to start doing the details in the flowers themselves. So that's what I would like to get done in the next like 40 minutes is really the foreground and the first kind of real pass at detail and solidifying things here okay so um, let's look at that the brown 
down below. So we're going to do a comb. We've got this here, which is sort of like our middle value. We're going to go lighter and darker. And I think maybe let's start with maybe some of our darker, maybe more saturated colors so that we can kind of mute them down if we need to or want to. And now I'm going to really adopt a very Van Gogh like uh, paintbrush technique with these kind of little dashes and and things that he's kind of quite famous for. There we are. So. So this is my warm orange. There's a little bit of uh, warm blue in here, just to give it a slightly brown quality. And you can see off here on the far right, he gets quite much darker in here, which you know makes sense just compositionally that we might have one side that's maybe a little bit more airy, and then another side gets a little bit darker. Okay, so let's move that back to the starting place. And move this here. Now let's just go, we'll take some warmer blue, mix that right in there. You can see just the warm blue with our, our warm red and warm yellow gives us this really dark brown. And we're not gonna use it too many places, but you can see, you know, there's a few areas where he's loading that up there, so. So maybe I'll just zoom back out. Let's go we add a bit more yellow into this mixture. So I just took my warm yellow, I'm just mixing it to the side. So I put that warm yellow right in there, it's just going to disappear and the color will hardly change. So we sort of defeat the purpose.
Okay. Now let's just take, uh, we'll start adding white to these colors. And we can kind of paint over a little bit. So you can see kind of the value of the color that we laid down there. Not only is sort of bleeding through the colors on that are on top, but it's in between them as well. So it saves us a little bit of time having to to paint everything uh, with a small brush strokes like this because that can take a lot of time. All right, you can see I, there's a little bit of other colors that sometimes get on my brush. I, I never mind that. I kind of like that. It's because it's it makes it for like a weird color combinations that people can't quite put their finger on what they are. So let's just zoom back out. And so this color, I just added more, I, sorry, I should have shown that. I just took more warm blue and mixed it into here. That's just going to give us also a bit of a, not only a bit of a duller brown, but a darker kind of one as well. And then as we start building it up and we kind of hit this, like a threshold where now we kind of start slowing down because we don't want to just we don't want everything to look the same we want there to be some variety in here He's got also just a little bit of a greenish, very subtle. Take a bit of that white, it's like greenish brown that he uses down here as well. I think, in fact, it needs just a bit more yellow. Let's 
take a bit more warm red. Let's go the opposite way. Let's get maybe a bit more of a slightly creamier quality. Okay, so now that's not perfect, but I think I'm ready to kind of start moving on from this. Uh, so that we can, when we get to the finishing touches, we can just put a little brush stroke here and there where we feel necessary, rather than, um, because again, we don't know what the rest of the painting will look like just yet. Okay. So, now let's move into the flowers here. So, I'm going to start with maybe a little bit of, uh, I'm going to take this warm blue that we made before, right? This is just warm blue with white. Let's do it again because it's getting a little bit sticky. So previously we used our cool blue up here. And we used our purpley blue down here, right? So that we could kind of emphasize some cooler colors in the background, warmer colors in the foreground. And because those are there, we can now kind of use the same sort of blue in a lot of different places. And there's going to be just those little subtle hints of cooler and warmer that are going to be in those flowers. They're just going to help reemphasize their position in this space, right? Um, actually, I think I'm going to go a little bit darker to start here. So I'm not outlining anything yet. I'm just, I want to get some shapes in. Now, the, the, the original is like twice the size, three times the size of this, so it's obviously way more detail. I'm not going to get all of that in.
as I'm getting closer and closer to the foreground, I'm using more and more of this ultramarine blue on its own with less and less white, right? So there's a little bit of white I bring in, and as, so it's getting more and more intense saturated colors because it's closer to the foreground. We want less and less blue, or less and less white, I mean. Still building. Um, that feels pretty good. I'm wondering if it's time to put away the big brush, or relatively big brush, and just go to really one of our smallest brushes and just start outlining here, because I think we're ready. So I'll check and see, do I have a Posca pen that would work? So I was just looking to see if I have a, I mean, I could try using a blue Posca pen and a green Posca pen to do outlining. Um, I have these other colors. I mean, really, uh, just of the colors I have, I was gonna use a Posca pen for doing detailing. Those would probably be the three. There's not a lot of green outlines. This blue might work, but we didn't want to use it everywhere. And gray, potentially. I mean, obviously, we these aren't the exact colors we need, but if we wanted to kind of make use of them, we could. Uh, let's see how far we can get without using a pen, though. Um, go well, maybe not quite that far in. So let's start with. Yeah, let's do, do, we'll do the flat. I was thinking maybe should we do the, all of this, but maybe let's try to get some of these flowers in here. I gotta blow dry this here. I'm getting paint on my wrist from all of this stuff down here. <laughs>
Maybe painting just a little bit of blues up there. Getting a little bit lost. Okay, so there's that flower, that flower. So technically that is this one here. Interesting, okay. So let's move you over. So, so far, I'm just going to go right across using the same color, just for speed's sake. It's going to make it less accurate, because rather than spending, you know, a, 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 a certain amount of time in one area, I'm just kind of motoring around. But... Uh, Like another thing too is, you know, this might look really light and that I've got to use a lot more dark colors and I will use more dark colors, but the outlining that I do later on is going to be really dark and it's going to instantly make these things look much, much, much darker. So I just want to be careful about making them too dark because otherwise even if I go too dark, then the outlines won't really be that visible at all. to the bottom flowers now. And of course, in the foreground, we're gonna have way more detail as well, right? So if I was gonna focus on an area to add lots of detail, it would be in this area, right in the, in the front. Because if we put a ton of detail in the background and then leave the foreground a little bit ambiguous, it's gonna look, there'll be a slight uncanny quality where it'll be like the foreground has been left kind of um, on its own. Like, even just look at the what he's like, some of these marks 
right down there, right next to his signature, are really some of the most detailed parts, and they're the very, very close. They're the closest to us as the viewer. Okay, I'm going to take a bit of this cool blue and mix this into the color as well. Gives us kind of a fun, intense color. A little bit of white in there. And I put a little bit of my warm blue back. Otherwise, it's going to be a little bit too cold. Sorry, let's uh, let's go back to the background here and just do this first. demanded a lot more subtlety than what I just did. So it's this, the building up of different um, blues, which is, gives it that kind of subtlety that I think is, that we want to capture. And focus. Honestly, I'm doing a lot of just making stuff <laughs> up here, which is going to make for when this painting is done kind of wildly inaccurate, um, which I'm sure will get its share of comments. But, you know, if we're thinking about trying to complete a, a painting this complex in a short period of time, we have to make some concessions, right?
Okay, we'll just do a little bit as, oops, a little bit in the foreground. We don't want to do too much of this, of a cooler blue in the foreground, otherwise it's going to pull things backwards, but it's nice to have, a, it's a really beautiful color. So if we want to do anything with it, it might be nice to have a bit more saturated version, a little bit less white in there. We're going to just add a little bit of this back into a few places. This is a little bit more of an intense, cool blue. Okay, let's just take a quick look. Comparison side by side. For the, at this stage of the painting. Now there's a lot of inaccuracies with these flowers and some flowers that are missing, etc. But, um, and actually, you know, let's maybe just while I do this, let's get a bit. Um, but I'm pretty happy with where we're at right here. Okay, <clears throat> so our next step here will be to, um, I think, you know what, let's get some of these outlines in here on the, and then, we'll, then we can, well, I think we'll have a clearer picture of what else needs to be done. So these outlines, if we just sort of look at them kind of closely, are, are really very similar to the, to the colors that we have in the flowers. A lot of them are a little bit warmer, which is going to make them a little bit darker as well. So, but not all of them. You can see some of them are actually very light, right? Just a little bit darker than this, like very subtle. So I think, and it's, I don't know if there's a rhyme or reason here. It does look like, well, I was going to say the ones that are closest to us are darker, but this one is closest to us. I think that's probably the closest leaf in the whole composition and you can see that it's maybe no darker than this one much further back so um, let's uh, take, take some white take some warm blue I'm 
I'm going to take a little bit of cool blue. And because it's been sitting on the palette for a little while, I am tempted to use just a little bit of glazing medium. So I'm not going to use a lot in here because that's just going to make it transparent and then I'm going to have to do more coats of paint, but this will just kind of awaken the paint enough that I can get some work done with it. Okay, so let's start over here on the far left. This is a darker one. I think, you know, I might go... over some of them twice in a few places. So in fact, let's get a few more versions mixed up here. Let's get, we'll have this one. Let's take another one that's maybe a little bit more blue. Or a little bit, sorry, warmer blue. We'll have another one that's got a bit more of a greenish quality. I'm just going to put a little drop of uh, medium. <clears throat> that way I can kind of mix them as I go. Let's put a bit of white in here as well. So I'm just going to kind of quickly do most of this, and then after we're, we've got it enough on here, then we can kind of edit and we can change these colors. See, I'm kind of being a little bit sloppy and heavy handed. Um, it's just because I want to get as much done as quickly as possible. And then, you know, one of the things that Van Gogh does is he, he just gets things done and then he edits. 
Just like a writer might do a first draft of a book and just pound it out, get it done, and then you've got something to work with. Not only that, it's going to give the, especially, you know, if we do work on it more, it gives it that look of that there's lots of thinking and decision making that went into it. It already starts to look much better. So maybe just to clarify where I am, that I'm painting this right there. This area there, right here, is this. I guess there's a little flower in there too that I haven't painted yet. And I don't know if I need to paint it, right? I can kind of look at it and be like, eh, maybe it's, it's, it can live without it.
I mean, this is going well enough that, you know, if I really wanted, I could probably, after this point, just be done. You know, I, I, uh, I don't know, we'll see, but I'm, I'm liking the way that this looks so much that there is that in my mind, like, hmm, maybe this is all this painting needs, really. So I just was started painting this little guy right here. So, you know, I just drew this line up higher because it wasn't connected to anything, and I'll put a little bit of white back in there, but that's an example of, you know, I can, I'm sort of correcting mistakes as I go, and we'll see. Later on, here, the, the logic of my situation is.
So this stuff here are leaves that were not in the original because this was off, this was not part of the original composition. So I can kind of have a little fun making a few things up. So let's take a look. Okay, so what do we need? Um, I'm pretty happy with the outlining. It's not perfect, and we want to get a little bit darker in a few places, and even add a little bit of yellow. Um, the other thing we need, really need to do is darken even more in the flower so let, we'll do that here in a second um, okay. but really we're we're doing really good like I think actually I think it's time to go into our finishing touches here we've got pretty much the whole painting established we just need to do some fine tweaking little details and that this can take as long as you want to take uh, remember this is about a third or less the size of the original so we're not going to be able to get all the details in. Not all the flowers are here. We're doing what we can to kind of capture the spirit of this painting. Okay. So. If we look at them together, what do we need? I think what we need right now is a dark color that we can also use as a, as a black and a gray. There's a few little subtle areas I think we need to build in here that aren't there quite yet so let's mix a black let's take our warm blue or sorry cool blue and warm red get these together actually you know what I was gonna add a cool yellow to this to make it into a, a, a dark black. Actually, you know, yeah, I'll still do that. Let's take a bit of that yellow. There we go. Still, I was I was thinking of maybe just even using that color for outlines, but I don't. It was a little bit purpley, 
and I don't, there's not really that much purple in this painting. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll then take this color and our uh, warm blue, mix that here. Now we've got a really dark warm blue that we can use for all sorts of areas and it's going to just pop. It'll zing everywhere it is. I'm also just cleaning. <laughs> I cleaned my brush off and then I immediately wiped it into where wet paint is. Anyway, let's... I'm going to take this yellow that's or sorry, white, that's got a bunch of colors in it. Actually, I don't mind that. But it, let's just make it a bit more of a gray. Because we got... just a little bit... that needs to be done on that flower. Just a little bit there. Actually, you know what? I'm going to blow dry all of this because we got all this wet paint here, so. Start in the bottom left corner here. I'm going to stick with the flowers, and then we'll, if there's any of this blue that we want to put below, there's a few little areas that we want to 
get some on, but for the most part, they're mostly done. So for this flower is this right here, this big one. So now I'm in this area. You can see I'm, <clears throat> I've taken out a lot of detail in this area, obviously.
Okay, so the, this top flower again. So, you know, if you're following along and you're like, I can't really tell where exactly his... I'm right there with you, right? It's kind of, it's pretty tough. You know, especially if I'm painting at this type of speed where I'm just whipping around... You know, as I'm doing this, I'm thinking, maybe is this too dark? Maybe I should have gone a little bit lighter for this background. I can always lighten it, but it would be a little bit of a pain. But um, it does make me think maybe I need to go even darker as we get closer to the foreground. Um, so let's just go right to the... Let's, uh, I'm gonna actually, let's put a, just a drip of glazing fluid in here. Let's get a bit more of our dark color. Okay, so I just dropped my paintbrush in the middle of my painting. So without panicking, we're just gonna get a little bit of water on a rag and just wipe that away. Right, if you're blow drying the canvas regularly and it's, it's all dry, then when that kind of thing happens, which it inevitably will, you're still okay. <laughs> So you can see it's a little bit more transparent here because I've added that glazing fluid. So I'm just gonna add more paint. Makes it a little bit more opaque. So these flowers in the foreground are, are quite heavily outlined. Way more so than the ones further in the background, which makes sense. All right, it just helps pull them forward for us.
And this, what I'm painting here, is the very top of what's at the very bottom. Oh, actually, there's a little bit more down there. Okay. But still, it's we're right at the very bottom of the painting. Okay, so let's zoom back out and just take a look at these two side by side. So let's, uh, I'm going to take the same paint, but let's just come back in and just lighten it up a little bit. In fact, let's take a little bit of the cool blue, mix that in there. So I'll have a darker color, but it's not as dark and it's a little bit further in the background. Some of those are already maybe a little bit too intense and dark, but let's add a little bit more white on there. So 
Got a show restraint here. Okay, let's just get a little bit of yellow maybe to do okay. I think it, you know I'm getting very close. So, let's take our blazing foot, let's get some yellow and white. Oops, a lot. is gorgeous.
So that would be probably almost something I might want to do a little bit more of. Um, you know, wait for that to dry a bit. Let's put a bit more. Let's take a bit of warm yellow now. It's going to give the same treatment. In fact, I'll just take this warm yellow, mix it into here. And then just a quick uh, pass down here on the bottom. Let's get this brown working again. So here's my orange. I think I'm gonna use the orange right out of the tube like that, not everywhere. But just to give some of this electric color. So we had painted a bit of this earlier, but now it sort of comes right back out on top. Okay. Uh, let's take some of this warm blue, put it in here. Get a darker brown. Okay, do I want any more grassy color up there? Maybe let's take some of our warm blue, cool yellow. Let's get, we have some of the cool blue in here.
I don't know. I think I could be happy with that. I think I could fiddle with it for another three hours. But I also think I could be very happy with it like this. Yeah, so let's just uh, call it a painting. Wow, that has got a lot of color on it. I feel really excited about that. Okay, so. It's time to do our side-by-side -side comparison and see how these two paintings fared next to one another. And, um, okay. If you're new to the channel, consider liking, subscribing, hitting the notification bell, join our Facebook group, upload a photograph of today's painting to the group, share it with the world, take that leap out there. And I know it's a little bit scary, but once a month I go through all the work that's on that Facebook group and offer people advice on how to improve their artworks. So if you want to participate in that, it's totally free strongly consider doing that and if you've learned something consider leaving a donation there's the paypal link down below you can contact me through the facebook group or my email on my website all of those links are down below okay so van gogh's irises how does it look side by side um it, you know it's not nearly as dense you know as i look in here you know there's more flowers that are all kind of in different spaces overlapping and to do that kind of thing would take you know some time to to make those distinctions obviously I'm, I had to simplify everything just because we're working on a much smaller sized canvas this area could also get a little bit darker I don't mind it like that though um, yeah so I think I'm, I'm just gonna walk away yeah I'm pretty happy with the way that, that looks how about let's just zoom in and just scan around the surface here for a few seconds. And as I said, there's there's lots of little details. I could have used four more different, slightly different kinds of blues in there on the flowers themselves. And up top there, a lot of detail missing. Um, obviously all these brush strokes much larger than the originals. Let's just go across. Oh, it'll go right through to the... Oh! You can just see there's so much more going on in his painting. But 
There's only so much time in the day, and if you want to do the the full thing in all of its glorious detail, then certainly take your time and do that. Otherwise, you can be happy with something a little bit like this, which gives, I think, a pretty good impression of what the overall painting looks like. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for joining me for painting along. Um, oops. Uh, um, oh, I'm trying to think of, there's a few more paintings this week. I can't remember what they are. So we'll see you then. Enjoy the rest of your week, wherever you are on a beautiful planet Earth. Have a great night and we will see you again soon. Good night, everybody.